and jump in here. So this morning, um, we had uh, spoken about, or we had gone through a little exercise with mobility and mobility between cities. So it was a hierarchical model. We had populations within, within cities, populations of people within cities. We have populations of cities within, uh, within a, uh, a broader environment. And um, those nested contexts um, were captured in a kind of similar context hierarchically within, within any logic. And just to sort of put a, a fine point on this, um, I just would note that, you know, here we have, maybe I'll prettify it by, by sort of starting it again, so these things are a little bit more sp spread out. Um, we have different cities represented here, each with its own population. People are moving between cities through this go-to population construct, and they're moving specifically to cities from which they can get to in one hop from their country. So they move to another city. Okay. Um, and the structure of this, I argued, mirrored the kind of nesting structure in the world. And what I mean by that is there are cities, and within each city, there are populations, and within each population, there are people. And each person is associated with a context of multiple levels in this case. They have a context for their city that contains them, and then a context further up yet for the entire environment, the main. Okay. Um, and you know, when we built the model, we saw that by having a city agent, which has a population of people, sorry, well, a, a main, which has a population of cities, and a city agent, which, um, which has a uh, population of people, and then a uh, person. So general idea, solid. You could extend this, you know, three levels, four levels, five levels without, without problems. Um, What's particularly nice about this is that we could also then compute statistics. We can compute statistics, for example, at the person level involving their history or aspects of their biography, um, number of times they've been infected or whatever. We could do so at the city level over that city, and we could do so at the global level, um, referring to you know, characteristics over all cities or all populations within those cities. Um, so this, this mirrors in some ways the sort of multi-level statistical modeling that sometimes goes on where you have you know, uh, mixed effects models or something. You have models at different levels of a hierarchy um, you know, for factors at the classroom level compared to the individual level, and then at the school level, and then at the, you know, the city level. Um, you can capture that exactly. In the and you could compare statistics on, you know, on for example, histograms of number of infections, times people have presented to an STI clinic at the city level. Um, and uh, you could also do so at the person level or at the level of the whole population, look at differences between cities. So while this is stylized, while it's simplistic, um, I, I hope you know, it has some obvious um, mapping into richer models that might speak to actual context. And to even more levels, and, it, and and really the level of coding involved in this hasn't been prohibited. It's required some new features, like you know getting the neighbors of my city and and the network there. Something we didn't have when we were just population in Maine. We didn't have Maine have neighbors, but now we have cities and neighbor. And then going to those locations. So the the probably the most distinguishing feature that we saw was this perform migration where they went to a given population, right? But right now there's no dynamics here. All it is is, no, I, I, I stand corrected. There's dynamics, they move from city to city, but what there's not is any interesting health dynamics on top of that. So I'd like to, in the final bit of this, which won't take long, I'd like to add some more components if I could, which layer in that health component. Mm -hmm. So let's, um, let's um, steal ourselves for that task, gird ourselves for that task. Okay, great. So um, here we are in person. And um, I'd like to add a 
a bit of health dynamics. And um, uh, while I'm always looking for new ideas given the limited time, I think we will um, uh, take a look at, uh, at, at some infection. Um, okay, um, great. So um, I'm going to depict uh, a situation where individuals go through, progress through a natural history of infection with respect to some communicable disease. Okay. Um, and we can imagine that communicable disease is being affected by their city environment, for example, um, um, although we won't fully explicate that. Okay, um, so here we go. Um, so I am going to go and place uh, within, within person, we're going to have a state chart. And this state chart is going to be a familiar one with susceptible, exposed, infected, and recovered. Uh, with uh, apologies to those who are, who are sick of such examples. So I'm going to add to this person, maybe I'll drag this down here, a, a state chart entry point. Here we go. And I'm going to call it infection state chart. Remember that state charts allow us this wonderful economy of mechanism to keep track of different health conditions and behavioral dynamics and, and other factors within a person. Simultaneously specify the states, the things that change the state and the rules that govern those things. Um, a little bit like a, how a stock flow does at a, at, for a continuous quantity, um, depicts all those things at once. So let's, let's go put that in there. Here we have states, okay? So, um, and when you connect it up, make sure it turns green because green is the color and state charts are the game. So we're going to say susceptible here, okay? And we're gonna drag in another one, which is gonna be exposed that represents latent infection. There we go. And here's another one, which is going to be uh, infective. And yet another one, which is going to be recovered, okay? And we will have, um, and it be an SIRS, so this is actually going to, to um, loop back around. Now, um, what's gonna go on is we're gonna fill in some, some structure, okay? Um, so uh, first of all, between exposed and infective, there's just going to be a transition, a uh, straight line transition, and this will be a timeout, and this will be called completing latency. Um, I'd like to name the states with capital, capital letters, and the transitions with lowercase, and I like to show my names, because I think for stakeholders it's often helpful, and for the model it's helpful for remembering, onboarding others, et cetera. And then uh, I'd like to, similarly, between infective and recovered, I'd like to have a recovery transition. Here we go. Uh, and that too will be a timeout transition. And this will be recovery. There we go. There we go. You notice I'm not filling in the details of this quite yet. I'm doing that with malice of forecast. Um, okay. And next, I want to put in a uh, uh, a transition back from recovered to susceptible. So here we go, and I'm going to drag it around. Here we go. There we go. I'm going to double click on this and drag it up here. Wow. Wow. And maybe I'll drag this over here. Yeah. Boom. Just like that. Okay. And and I'll do something like that. Not the greatest thing I've ever drawn, but it's not the worst either. So, okay, fine. Um, and this will be called waning, um, waning of immunity, to be more specific. And uh, this will be a um, this will be a timeout transition. Like that. Okay. Um, great. Um, timeout as well. Okay. Great. Um, now. 
um, I'm going to have a representation of infection. Where would infection be represented if someone it gets infected? Where where would we where would that appear in the model? Yeah, yeah, susceptible and exposed. Um, maybe, maybe multiple people said it. Yeah, so it could be a message transition. That's a good candidate. There's actually going to be, oops, going to be two routes here. Um, I did Control Z. Control Z is your friend, and in the U.S., it's Control Z is your friend. Um, here we go. Two transitions. Now, um, as was noted, um, uh, there's going to be messages here. Um, and I'm going to use these as an opportunity to, to teach you something. Um, I'm going to teach you a lesson. Um, so, so these are going to be message transition. Um, okay. Um, okay. Um, and here we are. Um, this is also a message transition. Okay. Um, message. Here we are. Um, uh, okay. So um, this message transition is, is going to be governed by messages, but they're actually going to be different messages. One is going to be an initial one that forces somebody to be infected. And then the other is going to be a, a, a simple um, uh, transmission. OK. Um, uh, OK. Um, and um, we're going to be sending here sort of potentially infected. Okay. Um, okay, so we're, we're getting some key dynamics in place, but we need to fill in some details, like what messages these are dealing with. And also we need to have, this is receipt of a infection message, but where would we send the infection message? Can anyone say? Where, where would it, where would, if, if this is, the receipt of the infection message. If someone goes from a susceptible state to a state of latent infection, immediately following infection, where was it that we would send um, a you know a pathogen infection message? Anyone? Uh, sorry. Um, so it it will be within the city, absolutely, and, and that's an important insight. Absolute. So it's to fellow denizens of the same city. But in what state would someone infect someone? Here. Sorry? Infected. Infected. So we need some way of, in the infected state, sending a, a, a message that says you're exposed, communicating the infection, infecting someone, exposing them to the infection, transmitting the infection. Probably the best thing to come from. So, so what we need is in infective here, we can um, send a, a message. Okay, um, great. Um, okay, now I actually uh, oversimplified this. Um, so we're going to have, despite my earlier utterance to the effect that we're gonna be sending potentially transmitting messages, um, potentially transmitting um, messages, I'm going to, in fact, have it not be a sure thing. So I selected these, and I'm going to stretch this down here. There we go. I, I, I just selected these, and then I, I use the arrow keys to kind of move it up and down, give myself a little bit wee more elbow room. And I'm going to drag in a branch here. What does a branch represent? Anyone? Yeah, yeah, possibilities, exactly, possibilities, different potential outcomes. One will go on to the exposed state, but the other, guess where it will go? Anyone want to venture a guess or hazard a guess? Yeah, I'll go back to susceptible. Um, so it's going to go back to susceptible. Okay, good. Um, and that's going to be... Uh, one, only one can be, why are they both red? By the way, it says error because there's too many default to exit because both are red. What does the red denote? Anyone remember? It denotes the, the 
it begins with D, default. Now, um, and uh, and so we only will have one default, and and it'll be this one, um, one default uh, transition. Um, I think a U.S. accent is coming out there. Um, so so we're going to have it go back to susceptible. Um, Michael will know what I mean if I say the adults rather than the adults. Um, okay, so um, so this is going back to susceptible. Be under a certain. Actually, you know, it's actually cleaner. I think it'll be conceptually cleaner if we do the reverse. The def the default. Um, trying to trying to accord with, with the local pronunciation is is uh, is going down, and I'll have the conditional go this way because when I flip a coin. I'll say flip a coin with a, a percentage chance being the chance of transmission for a given discordant context. So there we go. There we go. Some of you may want to prettify this by like stretching this up here. Um, okay. So this is the default. Boom. Um, and that we know that because it's dotted and this is the conditional. And we're going to have to fill in this condition. So we're set for most of what we need to represent. Um, but we need to fill in something about the messages, and we need to fill in something about these probabilities and timing, okay? This is the structure. Now we fill in the details of the particulars of the assumption. Structure determines behavior. And often it's more deeply the structure than the particulars of the parameter values to make the foremost difference. But let's, let's, let's go, Let's go set ourselves to fill in those details. Um, okay, so we want to have a time that it takes someone to recover from infection. We want to have a time at the latent period to go from exposed to infected. We want to have a time till waning of immunity. Mm. Um, and we want to have some things governing the contacts and the probability per discordant contact that's a susceptible infective um, that have contact, the probability that it gets transmitted. Where would I specify this? There, there are assumptions to be held across all people in all cities. Where would I hold this? In Maine is what is right. We're gonna go down Maine. Mm -hmm. um, and not get into whether it's Kenny Bunk Ford or Portland, Brunswick, Bangor. Okay, um, great. Um, so um, here we go. Uh, we're going to put those those um, parameters in here. Okay, so we're going to drag them in, um, and they are going to be um, a um, uh, latency um, uh, latency. Um, Latent period, we'll call it latent period. That's a common name for it, latent period. Um, and uh, we will, we will uh, additionally, um, and, and for its default value, uh, we, will use, uh, we will use a three-day default value. Um, not too different. It was 2.9 days for SARS-CoV-2. You could use 2.9. Uh, that was for wild type SARS-CoV-2. Now it's down. Okay, great. Um, and now we want a uh, another parameter that will be the um, uh, time to recovery or um, infectious period. Um, so let's call it infectious period. Mm -mm. And We'll say that that is um, nine days. Mm, nine days. Boom. There we go. Mm -mm. Um, it's actually closer to five these days for for, for Omicron um, was estimated, but um, that's really come down a lot. So I'm gonna leave it at, at nine. Okay, great. And then um, waning of immunity. There we go. Uh, waning of immunity. Um, so uh, this will be um, uh, so um, immunity 
uh, I'll call it duration of immunity, okay? And this is probably better, better represented as a rate transition, but I'm going to say um, uh, 240 days, something like that. Um, so um, something, something on the lines of, of you know, of, of, uh, a large, large part of a year, eight months. Um, so that would be fine. Um, maybe I'll say two seven months. Okay. Um, great. Um, nine months. Great. Um, okay. Um, and those are uh, those parameters. And then we're going to have a contact rate. There we go. Contact rate. That's going to be. That's going to be. Now, now this is going to get tricky. By the way, oh, there's a problem of what I just did. Did anyone catch that? There's a problem of what I just did. I said latent period 2.9 days. What's the problem here? Time unit is what? Darn right. So in years, 2.9, this will be 2.9 years. We've got a problem. Houston, we have a problem. So, so what, what we can do is to convert this to years, how do we do that? Yeah, we divide by 365, right? If this were 365 days, it will be one year. So we can just divide by 365, right? 365.25. All right. Um, okay, fine. Um, I think it's actually two four two five. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to get into this. Um, fine. And uh, infectious period um, will be nine point zero divided by that. Um, there's actually a rather nice way in any logic to say this is a time. And then you can actually specify the unit of the time. Um, I'm not going to get into this because there's some subtleties with it. But the point is, like right now, there's nothing that says this is a um, what's the time unit here. And if I want to specify it in days, there is the option at any logic being explicit about time and saying what time unit do I want to specify it in? Specify. But my, last I checked, it didn't automatically sort of convert it. Wade might be able to opine on that more, but we did a deep dive on that about six years ago. And it seemed like it was a great idea, just not completely implemented and it didn't really help us. Wade, any, any? Yeah. Um, so the idea is you could be explicit about the, about the um, time units, but it doesn't help you by automatically converting them when you need it in years, which would be the really nice thing, right? If you could specify in days and it says, oh, oh, that's just this in years, and it would take care of all that. That would be very natural, but so close to great now, but no scar. Okay, okay, and then um, uh, and then for for this, we'll have a contact rate, and the contact rate will be Number of people per year, one time. It's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of time. So maybe it will be, we'll say, ten contacts per day times three sixty-five. Sure. Now there's actually a nicer way. You notice I'm filling in this three sixty-five thing. I keep on filling it in. It's kind of artificial. You can actually multiply here. Um, Buy something, and Wade, you could remind me, but um, this may not be a time where it's really nice to do it. But um, I think there's a way to sort of say um, this times um, times day or something like that. Times day, and so this is actually saying days. Is that correct, Wade? Exactly, exactly, yeah. Precisely, yeah. So this will be times day, nine days, and this will be very good. Yeah, thanks, Wade. That was, that was my recollection, but it's good to get a check on this. 
to 70 days. That's kind of nice, right? It, 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 it makes it clear and it keeps your code available for crofting. Okay, now this is 10 per day, like that. It's 10 per day. I don't know about you, but I, I think that's a thing of beauty. So it's 270 days, it's nine days, it's 2.9 days, and it's 10 per day. We okay? Okay. Okay, next, I want to put in transmission probability per discordant contact. And forgive me, it's been a long week. Transmission probability per probability per discordant contact. And if I can be faulted for it being too wordy, I can note that I'm in good company with Blaise Pascal, who apologized for not having the time to write a shorter letter. Um, so um, here, transmission probability per discordant contact, I'll say 20%. In other words, if there's a meeting, a contact between a susceptible and an effective, there's a contact between them, a 20% probability they'll infect. Are we okay with that? Okay. We've laid out the particular parameters. We're, we're, we're getting very close to being done. Very, very close. There's just one or two fix up items. Maybe since we just did this, maybe we'll go and, and add these parameters in before we do the final, the fi put in the final little bits of logic. So we need to refer to all these things, latent period, infectious period, duration of immunity, contact rate, in this transmission probability per discordant contact, which is a name that only my mother could love. Um, okay, so let's go to person. Okay, so let's let's fill in the pieces here, if we may. This one here, what's going to determine whether? Oh, this is a good thing for you to see. I'm glad you're seeing this. I'm glad you're with us. I'm glad you're with us. I'm also glad this is being recorded. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, what's going to dictate whether they go, so, so what does this trans, transition represent from susceptible to uh, exposed? Can anyone say, what does that transition represent? What does that transition represent there? Yeah, it represents, uh, well, okay, contacts occurring in infective, but this is specifically a susceptible who has gotten a what? Yeah, message indicating they're exposed to pathogens. And with a certain probability, they will what? They will, yeah, change state and they will become, yeah, they'll become infected, right? They'll, they'll get infected. They'll be, they'll, this, this is the exposed state of latent infection. They won't be yet infective. They won't be infectious yet, but they'll be infected by this, with a probability given by that transmission probability per discordant contact. In other words, this is they're exposed and with a 20% chance. Now we could imagine saying, if they're wearing a mask, it's only 10%. That would be really easy to do, but time is short at the moment. That'd be really easy to lay in here, almost trivially easy. Larissa has her hand up and probably for good reason. Oh yeah, so you mean with, with this? Yeah, yeah, no, this is my this is my quarry right now. So ladies and gentlemen, a couple things here. So this would represent occurrence of infection, first of all, show name, okay? Um, this this little transition here, that's if it's actual infection. And guess what the the condition will be here? But under what conditions would we go down if with that probability, the transmission probability per discordant contact, we will get infected. We have to flip a coin with that probability, right? If it's only a 20% probability, we have to flip a coin to see if, it, if they get infected. If we were 50%, it would just be a normal coin. 20% will be like a weighted coin, right? So the way you do this in any logic, and I think Larissa has been waiting for this moment, is random true 
you say random true. In other words, with this probability, you'll, you, it'll be true. And you can actually look it up. It says generates true with a probability P. This is a very common thing. And what will the probability be? What's the probability they get infected if they're exposed right here? 20%, and where is that specified? And where does that very long parameter name live? Okay, yeah, thanks for not just saying in your heart. Um, transmission, transmission probability per discordant contact. It lives in Maine. It lives, ladies and gentlemen, in Maine. Okay? Okay. Um, okay. So one down, another four to go. Okay, great. Ladies and gentlemen, um, here we had main, here we had these components. And by the way, there's a, there's a kind of nice thing you can do. These, this interface is actually rearrangeable. So that, I can't believe I abused the English language in that way, but it, you can rearrange this interface. So we could actually go and put this thing over here and this thing here and see them. Um, so we can actually see those names. That's kind of nifty, isn't it? So uh, I, I, so I engaged in throbbing of these tabs. So in other words, I clicked on this, I dragged, and you notice as I drag, it sort of draws these shape, these kind of bars on the screen. If I dragged it here, it would mean it would split it vertically. One would be above the other. If I click it here, it means it splits it horizontally. One's alongside the other. So, so I'm going to do that. Ba boom. So now we have person over here and main. And if we ever got sick of that, we could close person and then you know go back to the main. By the way, you can also double click on these to be like, oh, okay. And generally you can double click on things to make it a full screen thing, um, uh, which is kind of nifty. Um, but I'm going to go here to completing latency and guess what this is gonna be? Can anyone say? It's going, where do I, what do, what do I need to put in here? A what? At what period? Uh, mm, 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 mm. Latent period, right? And where does it go here? Where do I put it? In the action? In the guard? No, the guard is to check is like, are they female or are they eligible for treatment or something? Um, so the timeout here is where we want it. And we're going to specify latent period, right? By the way, it wouldn't be a, have been bad if I called it latent period in years. That would have kept me conscious and I wouldn't have, would have avoided the 2.9 mistake. Okay, ready? Oh, you, you're right, I do. I, I'm, because I'm tired. <laughs> so, so, yes, you're right. I, I absolutely have to do it. Yes. Um, main dot latent period. Okay. Okay. Next, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is in the nature of things that the students succeed the master. Um, great, so how about this one? What, what goes here? First of all, what does this represent? It represents contact, right? Contact. And at what rate does the contact occur? Can anyone say? The contact rate, yeah. But there's a problem here. What is not adding up here? So I need to have it go at the contact rate, but what's the problem here? Well, yes, we've got to fill that in. Absolutely, absolutely, that's an essential component. But there's something else that's discordant here. It's a timeout. This is not a timeout, this is a rate. This is a rate, this is a, like, 10 per day or something like that. And it's looking for a timeout right now. What should this be instead of a timeout? It should be a rate, rate. That's exactly it. There it is. Are we okay with that? Okay, hearing no objections, we will continue. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, we'll come back to the logic for this. Well, maybe we'll fill it in right now. So this is a rate in its main dot what? Contact rate. There we go. 
what's the act? What's the act? What do they have to do? They have to send something. But what they have to send, we're going to, we haven't yet specified. So we'll come back to this. We're not going to fill it in quite yet because we got to tell, tell it what the possible messages are. So what do we do? So we'll have to remember to put that, put that in our parking lot to, to which to come back. For recovery, what do I put in there? Anyone? What do I put in for recovery? It's a timeout. So what would need to go in there? In, in the timeout value? Right now it's one, what should it be? Yeah, and where does it live? Maine, Maine indeed. Maine, ladies and gentlemen. Maine dot infect does period. There we go. Good. And finally, how about this one here for the waning of immunity? Um, I should really show the name. And what what value is it? Should it have? Anyone? You got it. Main dot duration of immunity. By putting those parameters in main we can set them in different experiments to different values. And, you know, even if we don't explicitly represent masks, for example, we can have an alternative, an alternative scenario, for example, which lowered the chance of probability per discordant contact. And that could kind of at a very stylized match level could allow us to investigate the impacts of hygienic interventions or things like that. We could lower the contact rate, which at a very generalized level might represent the effects of social distancing, for example, or work from home orders. So there's all sorts in any in agent-based modeling in general, you have all sorts of options for how much detail you want to um, put into, into representation of interventions. At the very highest level, you just change parameter values. This is the norm typically for aggregate system dynamics models or something, you just change the parameter value. And you know, that's, that gets you a certain distance. If you really wanted to represent it in more detail, you can put in more detail on the effects of masks and how many people you know, are wearing masks. And, and you, know, you could even get into issues of it, you know, is it, um, is it the transmitter wearing a mask or the receiver and, and somewhat different effects? Quite interesting stuff actually. If you want it, if that was part of your research question, or if that was part of what you're trying to investigate, you could do it. You have the option, you have the option to get into implementation science. But remember, constrain enthusiasm by purpose. Okay, so, so ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're basically almost done here. There's, there's just, uh, uh, just about two things left. First of all, let's color them by what state they're in. Thus far, we had them, we, we had this perform migration, color them by what, what, pot, what center they were from. And I sent to color, I'm gonna remove that color reference here. So we no longer color them by that. It was to sort of illustrate within our group, but we're gonna use color. We're gonna use it to indicate their health state. Although, you know, we could make the color of their circle, like we could have this be border color, um, uh, I think I'll, I'll just use color for, for their health state because we'd have to go set the other property of border color. Okay, fine. So, well, do, do people want to see, um, I don't know, there's fill color and then there's the border color. We could distinguish between them. Um, that's not a terrible idea. Um, I think, I think we'll just use color for health state in the interest of time because it's, it's getting towards the end. Okay, we ready? Okay, so I want to make susceptible lime green. I want to make exposed um, uh, yellow. Um, so that just goes like that. I want to make uh, infective red, and I want to make recovered magenta. There we go. We ready? Okay. How are we going to make? So if I ran it now, would the, would would susceptible people be green? If we if I just ran it, no, no. We have to tell them, hey, you're green. How do I tell them you're green? Or you're lying? 
How do I tell them you're lying? You say, what is it that sets their color? Yeah, but we can actually do it. I don't know if you remember, but like when we set the heart disease hazard, all we do is we assign it when we get into that state. Maybe that's what you're referring to. All we do is we, we say entry action here, this dot what begins with C. It could have a U in it. Um, this dot color equals lime. Lime, ladies and gentlemen. Lime, I tell you, lime. Okay? Okay. And for exposed, guess what we set it equal to? Yellow. I wish there were a way that any logic would just could allow you to declaratively specify this. It'd be so much nicer. Actually, you could just have a checkbox that says, set it to the color that's there. But many of these things we have proposed to them and they have not opted to do, including getting that time unit thing right. Um, and, uh, and then finally for recovered, we'll set it to magenta. Magenta, red, yellow, line. Are we ready for that? Okay, if we ran it now, what, what should we see? Everyone will be what color? Line, line, because no one's been infected yet. Okay, so that was one final thing we had to do. The other final thing we have to do is just specify the messages. That's all. Okay, just the messages, just the messages. Okay, I think Maggie had a good idea. Does anyone want to take a health break now for five minutes and then we'll finish this up? No? Okay, you want to finish it up? Okay. So where do we specify messages in any logic? Anyone tell me? Possible messages. The common safe place. You can do it with strings, but it gives me the willies to do it with strings. Sometimes it even gives me the heebie-jeebies because encoding these things with strings leaves it rife for misspellings. Sometimes you can put, it will just be a difference in a capitalization and it won't recognize it. If in one place you say, in fact, exclamation point, and the other you just say, in fact, it won't think it's the same. In one case, you put an a capital I for the first, the second you don't, it won't be the same. You want to constrain the possible options. You don't want to leave open, invite problems by allowing you to specify any weird old thing that won't match by leaving it to chance. Let's not leave it to chance. This is something we can control. This is something we can reduce the risk of error. This is something where we can actually be careful. So, ladies and gentlemen, where can we specify messages nicely? In a what? An option list. It, we give a set of possible possibilities and anything else outside of that is not acceptable. Are we okay with this? So let us add, let us add an option list to the hierarchical SEIR version one. So we're gonna do new option list and we'll call it messages. And this is my favorite. Well, I mean, it's my preferred way of doing it. So what we're doing to reduce chance, to not tempt fate, to not have unnecessary vulnerabilities, to not be throwing caution into the wind, to leave nothing to chance, we're going to add an option list and we're gonna have two messages. One is going to be force infection or call it initial infection. That's going to be one we privilege, and it's not a matter of uncertainty. It just forces them to be infected. We could have called it force infection, too. The other would be not to be confused with force of infection. The other thing we want to specify is exposed. They're exposed to infection, except there already isn't exposed. Exposed to pathogen, or call it pathogen exposure pathogen exposure, Oops. because it, it isn't necessarily they're going to be infected. I mean, if you're exposed to pathogen, you might or might not be infected. So I'll say pathogen exposure. Are we okay with that? 
one said two messages. What did I do to add that option list? I right clicked here, I said new option list. I called it messages. One is initial infection and one is pathogen growth. Now, if I forget later, how is it capitalized? It, it will auto complete it. It won't, it won't force me to think, did I capitalize it or not? Did I put an exclamation point after it? Which letters in it did I capitalize? No, 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 no. It, it'll fill it out for me. And, and if I misspell it, it'll say, I don't know what you mean. It won't just allow it to be silent, but deadly and, and cause a bug in my program. Mark my words, Steve. Mark my words. Um, okay, say finish. Oh, we once again stand at the cusp. The cusp, ladies and gentlemen, of greatness. Okay? Okay. We're, we're just about there. The final pieces are going to fall into place. We've lined it all up. All the, the bowling pins are on the floor, and the ball is rolling down towards them with a momentum that cannot be stopped. Okay, so up, up here, what is this message here that's going to lead to this uncertainty whether they're infected or not? Can anyone say? What message will, will lead to have to roll a dice whether they're infected or not? Yeah, pathogen exposure. By the way, I'm gonna drag this back over, okay? By the way, if you, if you ever screwed things up, you can close it and then call it up again. You can say, go, go, oop, oops, sorry. I think this is just closed here. And you can always, if, if a whole window closes, you could always call it up over here too. Okay, so it'll be pathogen exposure message. So fire this transition, is it unconditional if expression is true or on particular messages? On particular messages, darn right. And don't give in to that, that unwise suggestion, that temp, the tempter there, that sort of um, mirage, that that um, unhealthy, unhealthy, lazy suggestion. Don't give in to it. You're more worthy than that. Um, okay, so this is going to be pathogen exposure. That was it. Okay, pathogen exposure. It's just inviting recklessness. Pathogen exposure, okay? Okay. Um, and what is this one going to be? Initial infection, what's that? No. No, 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 these are, these are constants. These are the set of possible values. They're not strings. So no quotation. Nope. You don't want quotation. Quotations are the devil's work. <laughs> no, <I'm> like, <laughs> you don't want quotations because quotations are going to allow it to, you to put any willy-nilly thing and it won't double check that you've given one of the legal messages and it won't make sure it's the same message that you're sending and that you're potentially receiving and it will allow them to be totally mismatched and it will lead you down the path of doom. I've been down on the path a few times so I can speak and look where I ended up. Um, okay, so so that's what we, uh, that's what we want, okay? Um, okay. So don't go down the path of doom. You want the, the messages to be clearly delineated what the legal possibilities are, and then you wanna use them and it will auto-complete them. And if you misspell it, like if you try to say pathogen exposure without a capital P, it'll say, I have no clue what you mean. And that's exactly what you want. You want it to correct you. If you've misspelled it, you want it to know that you've misspelled it and correct and put you back on the way of righteousness. Okay, okay, um, okay. So ladies and gentlemen, um, pathogen exposure, initial infection, and guess where we have to finally send this message? What message is sent here? Anyone? What message is sent? What message is sent? What message is sent? 
What message is it that someone sends while in the infective state to other agents? Pathogen exposure. And to whom does it send it? This dot send to random, random what? Connected and you send pathogen exposure. Are we ready? Are we ready? Okay, it built successfully. Okay, now we're done with all the subsequent logic except for one, one key thing. What have we not done yet? There's one key thing we've done. We haven't done. What is it? If we ran this right now, all the logic will be there for pathogen transmission. All the logic will be there for recovery and loss of immunity. It will be a thing of beauty, but it will be devoid of, of interesting dynamics because we have not done one key thing. We have not put in place one key starting point. And what is that? What is that thing we have not changed? Anyone? What is the thing we haven't done? Yeah. Yeah, we, ladies and gentlemen, we didn't send an initial message. No one's starting effective. So there's no spread of infections. Okay, so that is the final thing we need to do. Okay, you ready? Okay, so I'm going to send this automatically. And the way I would do it is I would take a event and I would say initial infection event, initial infection event. And where does it live? in Maine, because there's one for the whole population. It occurs once at time zero years. And what does it do? What, pray tell, does it do? It, yes. Some random person in some random city. You speak well. Your mastery is evident. So this dot cities, because we have to get some random city, right? Dot random. This is kind of follow your notes. Um, okay, so we get a random city. And then what do we do? We find a random person in it. And how do we, if we have a random city, this will give us a random a reference to a random city. How can we get a random person? We have to ask about that city's what? Population, population, and we have to get a random what? Person. Okay, 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 that's, that's great. Okay, so this is gonna give us a random person, but we need to send a message to this person, right? That's what that's where we're writing this out. A random person in a random city. I am going to say this dot send send. Okay. Now I'm going to send it to a particular agent a certain message. There we go. There we go. The 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 destination is that i'm going to put this up on the big screen you don't have to worry and guess what message i will send to them no pathogen exposure would make it a a flip of the coin whether they get infected initial infection that's what we're setting up the initial infection and that might be suggested by the name initial infection boom so let me put this up on the big screen. I will also drag it over so you can see it in the week. Um, so there you go. Um, here we go. Boom. That's a that's a pretty big line, but let's parse it out. So I, main main meaning main, want to send this message, initial infection, to a random person in a random city. How do I get that random person in a random city? I get my cities. I select a random such city. I find the, random, the population of that city and I select a random person. Are we okay? 
That's it. That's it. And okay. Are we okay with that? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would contend that we have stepped over the cusp of greatness and now stand in the presence of greatness. Let us try. Can we try? And I may be bitterly disappointed. This may be a bitter theory killed by an ugly fact. But let's let's give it a try. Okay. Okay. So where's the initial infective? I actually don't see an initial infective. I didn't see someone getting infected, which is surprising. Okay. So <laughs> greatness has eluded us thus far. So let's go figure out where's that initial infective. I didn't see it at all. So let's go figure out what went wrong. Um, first of all, did this get set? So watch this. I, 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 I'd like you to watch how I debug this. This is going to be very emblematic of how I debug things in general. And I tend to be able to, to zero in on this. Thing. OK, so first of all, I'm going to trace LN. Did, did this event ever fire? Fired initial infection event, right? Um, so did this even get here is what I'm asking. One hypothesis, it didn't get here. So I, when I pursue a problem, I, I, I do so with different hypotheses. One hypothesis, this never got fired. So I'm going to have this print out. That will check that hypothesis. If I can rule out that hypothesis, then it starts going, did they receive it? And maybe, maybe I'll first just check this hypothesis for, for cleanliness. I could easily put both in, but, but here we go. Oh, oh, it's giving me a problem. Trace LN of string. Oh, oh okay, okay. Um, oh, it's not trace NLN. It's trace LN, not trace NLN, okay? So all I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, I got here. It's kind of like a Kilroy was here sort of thing, okay? Okay, so all I did that, and I said, hey, did I get there? Let's, let's go see what it, what it says. Here we go, and, and there it said, fired initial infection event. So I know it, it sent it, okay? That's great. Um, so then the question is, did somebody receive it? Where would I test that? Where would I print something out if someone received it, eh? Where in this model would someone receive a message of the initial infection? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And where in person would we expect them to receive it? Yeah, the infection state chart. Where in the infection state chart would they receive a message, initial infection message? Yeah, it's susceptible. In fact, it's this particular message, right? Okay, so let's do here. Say trace LN received message. By the way, if, if you really want to know how I do this, often I just say like, I just print like pound one, pound two, just, just some unique indicator of where I am. And I can go see, oh, it got to pound one. But received initial infection message, right? There we go. Um, so I want to know, did they receive the message? If so, well, they should have transitioned to the exposed state. Okay, um, I'm getting a, I've developed another theory of what's going on that I just didn't run it long. I should have run it for longer and maybe, maybe they, they were still in the latent state of infection at the time I stopped it. That's another theory. Okay, here we go. Oh, they received it. Do you see that? They received it. Okay, what time is it? Nine years. Okay, so so did they not spread it? So they got it. They they much must have transitioned here because that that's on the route here. Let's see if they ever get to infective. Can we can we print out something here? So I'm going to say reached reached in uh, infection state reached infection state. By the way, if you did the AnyLogic debugger, you could set what are called breakpoints on this, and you could run it with the AnyLogic debugger, or you could do it with an external debugger. But for me, it's so quick to do this and so flexible, you can, you can easily kind of zero in on these things. The, the, the real timing in my experience is not sort of putting these things. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, do you see what I'm seeing? 
What's going on? There are a lot of people getting infected. Look, let's go take a look at what's going on in the population. This is not one of my dominant hypotheses, but, but you know, um, I'm willing to be surprised. So here's someone in a susceptible state. My original idea was that everyone was susceptible, but I mean, it does look like people are pretty consistently susceptible. So who is it that's getting infected? It's getting infected again and again and again there. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm having trouble finding anyone who's not infected. Okay, reach infection state. Okay, so this is really interesting. Okay, um, couple hypotheses. Um, first of all, is it the same person reaching you again and again or something? I'm gonna print out this dot. So I'm gonna say, who is reaching the infection status? I'm gonna see if it's the same person every time or a different person. I assume it's a different person, just as a sanity check. Just as a sanity check. Let's, let's go try this. Here we are. Look at all these people getting, getting infected. Oh my God. All these different people are getting infected. Why aren't they changing color? Well, ain't that something? So first of all, did we set color? to the different colors, yes. Um, this is color, it was originally black. It's obviously being written to. Let's go look at, at this person. Um, the line color, the fill color is set by color. Okay, okay, this is, this is starting to, to be really interesting. Um, okay, so uh, they're in this context, first of all, Okay, so, so this is not computing. Um, why are they not turning red? That's the question here. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they should be, they clearly are turning green here. Um, why are they not being visible? That's the question. Um, okay, I'm gonna run it for a bit longer, just see what happens. I mean, I'm, maybe I'm not, observing it long enough. Here we go. Here we go. So there we go. And we're running it. And let's go see. Okay. And what I'm saying is that it seems people are getting actually infected, but I am just not seeing evidence of this. Okay. Okay. That's, this is, this is very unusual. Um, okay. So hypotheses. Okay, first of all, um, I, I'm, I wanna be sure these are turning green because of that. So I'm gonna make their initial color mauve. I don't know. I don't even know what color mauve is. No, no, no. <laughs> what, what's, a, what's a weird color to make them? Gray, I'm gonna make them gray. dark gray. Sure, I'll make them dark gray. Let me, let me make sure sanity check, like, like they're being set by that color. Okay, so they are all dark gray. Okay, happy, happy, happy. Okay. It, it, it's saying, okay, now I want to set them on this. I want to set this back to line. It just, I want to be sure they are getting set. Okay, now I'm going to set them here. I'm going to set them to this dot, this dot color equals, really, I should make a, a copy of my model. I'm going to say this dot color equals dark gray. There we go. And I want to see what, what happens. Here we go. So um, I think Wade is probably having a fun time watching this. Okay, so clearly they're getting affected, but they're not changing color. So this is utterly fascinating. Okay, so what in the world is happening? That's the question. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay, um, so they're not, they're not changing color for that. Um, they, they're evidently getting here. Um, how if I, so I'm not even seeing any yellow. It's as if we're running and the, part of the model says they're getting infected and part says they're not. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a sanity check here. I am going to, well, clearly I printed this out and they're getting, they're reaching this point. Yeah, they're reaching this point. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, okay. Um, 
So, so what in the world is going on? Because um, on the one hand, it's printing it out as if they're getting infected. On the other hand, they are, they are not appearing that way. Okay, let me try this. This dot, I'm gonna do a, a crazy thing. Um, I'm going to set person image to be dot set scale. Can I, can I set the scale? Yeah, I could set the scale. I'm gonna set it for infected people. I'm gonna make them five times as big as a normal person. <laughs> oh, oh, it went blank. Okay, watch this. There we go. I'm gonna set their scale. So, it, so I'm not gonna count on color. I don't, I don't trust the color right now. The color is not lining up with what I see. I'm gonna make them really big in a way that will make them really obvious. Let's go see what happens. Let's go see. Okay, I don't see anyone turning big either. Okay, this is about as funky as they get. Um, okay. Um, wow, this is fascinating. This is about the most interesting bug I've seen in a long time. Okay. So let's, let's go sanity check. I want to go check out what's going on at an individual level. Okay, so you've got all these susceptible folks and they are, they are sort of seem, seem just sitting there in the susceptible state. So who in the world is getting infected? Are they dying quickly or something? Are they quickly disappearing? What, what is that? Okay. Let's, let's do this. I'm going to make a copy of this model. This is not good to, I'm going to call it debug, debug. This is the best practice. Call it debug while you're figuring out because you're futzing with it. and You don't want to leave lasting scars. I'm going to disable waning of immunity. One hypothesis is people are losing their immunity super quick and they're ending up green again. And so you don't even notice. It's like a flash in the pan. So I'm going to disable this. Um, I'm going to ignore it. There we go. Ignored. Boom. I disabled this thing. Now let's run. Let's see what happens. Maybe, maybe, but they still should be big by my last change. So, ah, the fox has shown its tail. Who lead away ba? Okay, so this is, look at that. What is that telling us, ladies and gentlemen? What's going on? Well, yeah. At a at a certain high level, right, right. So somehow things are occurring, but fundamentally, are people getting infected? They are, and how do we know that? They're recovering. So there's a whole swack of recovered people there, and in order to get recovered, they had to have been what earlier, infected. So it is spreading, but it seems to be spreading so quickly that we're barely noticing it. 50 years, 51 years. I hear a voice of reason in the crowd, a voice of none other than Maggie. And I think maybe we need to run this model slower. Can we try that? Um, notice that because I saved it under a different name, I could proceed with abandon because I don't have to worry about it hurting the original model. Okay, so. This is what I want to do. I want to stop it. And I'm going to, hey, come on, get back. Um, I think the time unit is so quick, you're right, that I'm barely noticing this. Um, so one thing I could do is turn it way down in time. OK, here we go. 1 250. Watch this. OK, there's the infected person. Oh, look, look, they, they're spreading it. Do you see it? Do you see it? They're spreading, it's spreading. And guess what? It's all in the city right now. We can see it play by play in slow-mo. Do you see it there? Okay, I mean, this is gripping, isn't it? Yeah. Um, okay, it's, it's, oh, what's going on over here? Can anyone see what's happened? Okay, yeah, so, so some folks came over to there from, the, from here. Um, and in short, this is, has spread a little bit to this area, but fortunately it petered out, right? And now, now it, it sort of petered out, right? And it, I, I guess there's still some people here, but, but no one's becoming susceptible again. So it kind of the outbreak petered out. It, it, 
these were a couple sparks that wafted over, um, but maybe they were already burnt out by the time they wafted. Let's, let's run it again. Okay, so this is starting to give some, some understanding of dynamics of this model. So we're going to spread, oh, here it's spreading up here. Do you see that? Now watch this. Some of these folks may migrate down here, right? Depending on the vagaries of how quickly they migrate. Oh, it looks like they all recovered here. And what would have happened before is that, by the way, there's one susceptible still there. They would have recovered back to a, or two. They would have recovered back to a fully susceptible state, right? Um, but now over time, they're, they're moving around, you know, and, and moving into some other cities here, like particularly this city with which they're, they're um, with which, which they're connected, right? And some of them have even moved from this city to this city, you can kind of see. They came originally from that city. Okay, so this is starting to sharpen my mental model. What was going on was actually not a problem with the model, it seems. It was a problem with the time scale over which we were viewing it. Maggie noted it first. That was a reasonable hypothesis, which actually was kind of my going one once I saw that as well. Okay, so let's let's um, remedy that. Um, so how to how to remedy that? Well, one thing is we, we certainly want to make sure that it's not running it uh, as fast as possible. And um, and and that's the case here. We could say, notice the model time here. Do you see that? Um, you could set it initially to run slower. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I just saved this as debug. I'm going to go back to the non-debug model and, and make those changes there. Because the debug model, I have things disabled and, and so on. So I am going back to models. And here we go. Um, come on. Um, OK. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, this is hierarchical. Uh oh, no, I didn't. I should have saved it for that without the debug name. Um, when was the last time I saved it? Let me stand corrected. If, um, okay, so the last time I saved it was 3.11. Okay. Here we go. Okay, okay, um, great. Okay, okay. So, so I saved it just before disabling it, it looks like. So what I'm going to do is go to the simulation and set it to be real time with scale one over two, 250. That's what we want. And we don't have to do this set scale thing because we know basically it's, it's working. It's not bad to have these print things printing out. And I'm gonna say run and we're going to see it now spread. Now we have disabled, I mean, we've enabled waning of immunity. How is that gonna cause differences? So look, it's spreading here, right? And, and some people are starting to recover here, are starting to wane immunity, but it's already burnt out. It's already burnt out. So it's really, the parameters are such that it's actually just burning out within a single city before people really migrate that much and before um, people get back to susceptible. Let's suppose we had a shorter waning of immunity. So I'm gonna call this the baseline scenario. The baseline scenario isn't bad. It leads to a population that, where there's an outbreak in one city most of the time, and then it just peters out. It, it just burns out locally. Let's add another one. I'm gonna copy the baseline, this is the best practice. Right click on the baseline and copy it, paste it. There we go. And I'm going to say short term, short term immunity. Are we ready? Short term immunity. And instead of being 270 days, I'm going to make it 60 days, six zero days. A boom. How do you think that will change it? Anyone? Waves of infection, because some people will be able to get reinfected. So basically, while the infection's still around in that city, other pe the people 
who were infected early will be getting susceptible and they can be reinfected. And so it'll keep on burning. And that will allow what to happen with other cities. Anyone? Yeah, because they'll be moving out while they're infected, right? Here it's spreading. Here it's spreading. Um, oh, it still was not fast enough. Look at that. It's, it's still burnt out in one city. Now, maybe in some rare cases, it will be in a, oh, wait, did I? Okay, did I run? No, I did short-term immunity. Here it is. It's spread. Oh, here's a, okay, yeah, the person recovered. So it's still not, for these parameters, it's not, um, it's just not spreading. I'm going to make it really short-term immunity, like like a uh, brief immunity. Here we go. Uh, paste. I'm going to call it brief immunity. Okay. Um, so there's short, and then there's brief. Uh, I could call it 30 day, but 30 cannot be the first things in the name. 30 day immunity. Here we go. Boom. Okay. Um, gosh, I'm going to make it 15 days just for the extreme, 15 days of immunity. Maybe this is something like chlamydia, um, or something like that. Here we go. Um, so you're treated by antibiotics. You don't have persistent immunity. And here you go, it's spreading, it's spreading. Um, oh, still not enough. Look at that, because it spreads out. And by the time, that people become susceptible the infection in a certain area, the infection is burnt out. This is different from my mental model, but that's the point of modeling. You learn things, okay. So that's, that's actually still capturing the infection within, the, within one city, basically, with high, with high probability. What would lead this to spread more broadly? What was happening? Higher migration rate, yeah. So let's let's try that. I like that idea. So let's try copying the baseline and pasting again, and we'll say, um, you know, uh, high migration, right? Um, and we'll make the migration instead of one out of every ten years, we make it one out of every um, uh, one out of every two years or something like that, right? So it's a highly mobile population. Think worker camps in the oil sands in northern Alberta or something like that. You know, highly mobile population, um, uh, and and people going back and forth to their home communities in Newfoundland, Labrador, and and in Saskatchewan and so on. And it actually spread a lot more quickly, but it didn't happen to spread infected people that time. But it makes you wonder if, if you ran it again, maybe some of these sparks, it all depends on the luck of the draw, right? Um, uh, oh, look, like this is a red one, who, oh, but they recovered quickly. So it all depends, you know, are they, are they moving fast enough that it's going to, to catch, right? Um, uh, in these other areas. Um, and it's looking like it's not, Hatching uh, in those other areas, um, even so with the uh, high migration. Now, if we did very high, we could take this to the extreme. We could make them, you know, move every uh, half year or something like that, or every quarter year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this high migration one. I'm gonna call it very high migration. Um, after a while, I'd say migrate every so many days. And uh, here, the migration will be one every, you know, four times a year, basically. I'm going to just say four times a year. That's what that means, right? Migration rate, four times a year. 0.1 will be every 10 years. Four times a year will be four. Okay, there we go. And, and we're going to run it. Oh, no. no. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, oh, look at that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. Oh. Okay. So it actually started to spread. I don't know if you saw that. Um, it was, okay, so some of these folks are going to move, I think. Um, oh, this time it didn't, didn't actually catch over there. It looks like it's basically um, a matter of 
of chance. Now, if we had these communities be larger, that would also probably allow it to stick around for considerably longer. Um, but right now, it seems to be that you know you need quite extreme levels of migration or or um, short term immunity or very long periods of um, of, of infection, for example. So I'm going to try long period of infection this time. So here we go. I'm going to ask another what if. What if we had very high levels of infection? Boom. Okay. So this will be prolonged infectiousness or prolonged infectivity. And I'm going to make it, instead of nine days, I'm going to make it 30 days of infection. There we go. 30 days of infection. What do you think is going to happen now? What do you think will happen now? Instead of nine days, 30 days. No. They would be infectious for longer. In fact, um, that did happen. But even so, by the time that people had uh, so by the time you know people had uh, started being susceptible again, all the infection was gone. That just wasn't enough sticking around till the point where people were getting infectious again. I'm going to try this. This is a structural sensitivity analysis. So I'm going to, by the way, save this. I'm going to make it version two, and now I'm going to say, suppose this duration of immunity was a rate transition. Mm. And it's going to be given by a rate over um, duration of immunity. One over, oops, what is it called? Um, waning, waning of immunity. Did I just, no, I didn't, it's not waning. It's main dot duration of immunity. So this is a rate of this. This will keep the average duration they spend in the state the same, but what's going to be different now? Some people leave sooner and some people stay longer. So this is a structural change to the model I just made. Instead of everyone waiting for 270 days, boom. Some people will leave sooner, some later. And now I suspect perhaps if I had prolonged infectiousness, you would start to get some people becoming susceptible again sooner, okay. Um, uh, but still, no, 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 no. It burns out too soon. It burns out too soon. Very interesting. Um, I think you really need this, this very particular combination. Let's try the high migration or very high migration in conjunction with this. It's possible that some combination of this will lead to prolonged spread. So let's let's try this. Um, here we go. Okay, and okay, I ran it too fast. I kind of screwed it up. Okay, so let's try it again. Okay, so okay, so here's someone infected. It's spreading to other networks now. Um, Ah, okay. I have a theory of what's going on. I think, and wait, I'm interested in your insights into this. I think there's a bug in our model. And you know what it is, Wade? My hypothesis is they are moving into the other city and not getting woven into the network. That's what I suspect is occurring, because I had originally given myself to weave them into the network. And I said, oh, it looks like they're being woven into the network from what I'm seeing. But that is the key point. I think they're moving, but they're not in the network. Therefore, they can't infect people in the other city. As a result, it's not spreading in the other city. Okay, now. 
I think this is, may require us to do something different because we're going to apply network um, in this new city. So when they move, this perform migration here, you see that? What we want to do is when they go to that city, the destination city, we want that to do destination city dot apply network like this. There we go, like that, okay? Are we okay with that? So notice I put this in this function, so I don't have to, I, I know exactly where to go, I put it in. So I'll put it up on the big screen. We're applying the network. The problem was, I think we are bringing people in and they won't open it, weren't woven into the new network. And so it was never catching in another city because they weren't able to transmit it to anyone, even if they were infectious. So this is going in perform migration. That's all. And I have to say, put them in the network. I thought visually that they were being put in the network. I actually had down in my notes that we needed to do this, but I said, ah, oh, it looks like they're being woven in. That that should be fine. Okay, so let's 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 try this. So this is very high migration. Here it's spreading in the original network. Ah, did you see that? What happened? It it spread very quickly. Yeah. Um, let us let us backtrack. Let us backtrack. First of all. How about for the baseline scenario? Do you think it'll spread very quickly there? Between cities? Look at this. Eh, there it still burns out. Still burns out. Let's try for the high migration. Not very high, but high. Once every two years. Here we go. And we'll run it. Here we go. And it's spreading, and it's spreading, and it does spread to those cities. Why isn't it spreading to these cities? They're not network. So even high migration does allow this to spread. How about a brief term immunity? So an immunity of only only 30 or 15 days. Let's let's try that. Committee might be a month or something like that. This is really short-term immunity. Here we go. Ready? And ah, that spreads as well. Do you see? It's staying active here and it can spread. And it'll probably only be a matter of time. Up, oh, there we go. There we go. Spreading. You see that? So so there over a wide variety. Let's try prolonged infectiousness. Uh, infectiousness of 30 days. Watch this. There we go. Here it's spreading. They're staying infectious for long enough that maybe some of them will actually start to move up. There we go. And, and it's possible someone will move over to these cities. Okay. Um, not yet. Not yet. There we go. It's spread over to those cities, and now they're in trouble. Oh, those different cities are in trouble here. Oh, God. Um, uh, and okay, so this these three cities got affected, and it's staying around. The worst thing, it's staying endemic. So eventually, probably it's just a matter of probability it'll get to these. Uh, there we go. Oh, what a horrible thing. Um, okay, okay, so that that had it as well. Um, short term immunity, very very high migration. Okay, so here was a case where. You know, we look for emergent behavior and models. And I was expecting for some parameters that it would start to spread between cities. I was like, wow, this is really resistant. You know, it's, my hypothesis was, well, this is probably because of the parameter values. And maybe it's two small cities. It's not sticking around for long enough. It's burning out too quickly, even with very high migration. But I was getting more and more suspicious. And then I kind of noticed in the visualization, wait, that, that person doesn't look like they're hitched up to 
that clearly. And I fixed it by applying that network where they, when they went there, they knitted them into the network. And that totally changed the behavior. Two, two lessons from this, if I could, beyond the general lessons of hierarchy. Number one, I wanna highlight the fact that this was a case where I wasn't sure if this was an interesting emergent behavior or a bug. And it was a bug. The second thing I wanna to draw to your attention is that the visualization was critical for quickly assessing what was going on. And I don't think I would have noticed this nearly as quickly if I hadn't been able to look visually and seen what's going on here and say, wait, that looks suspicious. Our visual cortexes, our visual mechanisms are very, very well attuned to spotting irregularities, to spotting patterns, to spotting suspicious components. And this takes advantage of it, this visualization in a really rich way. And you can kind of smell out problems sometimes because. But more generally, if we step back for this exercise, we can of course reflect on the fact that we can easily represent nested contexts. We can capture movement between contexts across multiple levels of, of a hierarchy. And we can capture multiple types of dynamics, mobility, movement between areas, and health status evolution within a model. And we can do so, and although I won't show it here, we could compute up, for example, at a city level, if we were to go, for example, to the city, we could compute up population statistics, well, be easy to do, right? A population statistics count infective here, and we could count the number of people that are infected, right? Um, uh, item dot in state person dot infective or something like that. Um, and we could count that up and we'd have statistics of the person at the city level. We could count up within Maine over cities, certain types of characteristics. Um, and, and we'd have a, a set of statistics at different levels that we could compare in principle with extreme. Okay? So that's a little example model for you. And it's a little example debugging exercise for you. And a little example model exploration exercise where I was trying to trace down what I thought was interesting emergent patterns, and it turned out to be bugs, a bug that it wasn't properly knitted in, in my visual cortex, in the visualization was critical for it. So I hope that offers some value, hope that offers some points of interest, hope that offers some glimpse into debugging and into inquiry and what's going on into using scenarios to probe different issues. And to using that, that printing things out to see. We also had a little bit of debugging that went on also. Remember when it was staying all green? Remember, I thought that was a bug. I thought it was a bug, but it wasn't, right? And later I thought there was something that wasn't a bug. There was emergent behavior, but was. And hopefully the mode of inquiry that I used will give you some ideas about how you could explore these things yourself, even without you know, tools like an extra debugger or something, okay? The most powerful debugger are hypotheses in our head and the ability to go and investigate them. That is the key factor. A mechanical debugging tool is, is useful. It's a nice little tool to assist, but it's the most critical thing is to investigate hypotheses, systematically try probing them, printing out things and, and inquiring, is it getting here? Is it getting there? What is this value? Developing hypotheses and, and evaluating. That is part of the art of pursuing debugging and pursuing these models. Okay, so that's it. Um,
that's the last of the exercises that I prepared. And I will now, I will now post this model for people's perusal and pleasure. And we will now, I think, break up into a final little session for the incubator. And my own suggestion is that we return here um, within, let's say, an hour's time, say, in, in an hour's time to, uh, to do a little show and tell about where the models have gotten to, if that's OK. Are we OK with that? OK, awesome. Great, great. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in an hour's time to reflect on where the models have come and what their what lessons you've learned from them. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll stop this now. And with your leave, I will rest.